name is Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contra, you need a team of pros. Hey everybody, Alex with Bay Cities Construction. Welcome to the live show. Today we've got Simpson Strong uh, frame versus the MyTech Hardy frame. So we're talking soft story retrofits. We've had a lot of uh, phone conversations and actual site meetings this week. We have I put together a blog article this week uh, comparing the two products. We're also going to do a little bit of a recap on the soft story retrofit, what the process is, and uh, I'm going to give you an update on the city. And of course, we're going to have an offer at the end of the show. If you're interested in a soft story retrofit, you need some help with that. So don't go away. We got a jam packed episode, episode 23, soft story retrofit, Bay Cities Construction. We'll be right back. Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contra, you need a team of pros. Hey, what's up folks? Alex, we're back. Want to recap a little bit about the last episode when we talked about soft story retrofits. Actually, I'm sorry. The last episode was Kitchen Faucets and you can watch that episode 22 on YouTube and also here on Facebook. So we talked about uh, faucets. We talked. Uh, we had a little comparison, Moen versus Kohler, and uh, it was pretty cool. Tonight's episode, we are going to recap a little bit about uh, Soft Story Retrofit 101, talk a little bit about the deadlines. There's a, there's a deadline in September, so we're going to talk about the deadline. I'm going to give you an update also on what's happening with the city. Uh, we're going to compare Simpson Strong Frame versus the Hardy Frame and give you a side-by-side -side comparison. By the way, I wrote a blog article that's going to be posted... Uh, and there'll be a link on the description below shortly thereafter the show. And hey, for those of you that are sharing the first five shares, I always give away a little freebie. So please share. So let's let's just have a little quick recap. Soft story 101. What is a soft story building? Okay. Soft story building typically has tuck under parking. It's got a, a peer system, a peer and post system. You know, and then it's got three walls that are open. Could be one wall. The what makes it a soft story is basically having the front of the building um, open, 16 feet or greater. There's a bunch of different ways to repair or re retrofit these buildings. We're going to talk about some of your options. Okay, so typically it's a wood frame building built built in the 70s. And uh, it's missing shear walls on the side. For those of you who don't know what shear walls are, they're the walls that give you lateral support. When the building rocks, it keeps uh, keeps it from falling down. So this is the before picture of the project we're working on in Santa Monica. We're actually remodeling the entire building. It's a, a four-unit building, and we're doing the retrofit work, but we're also remodeling the apartment units. And uh, that this house looks very different today than uh, when this picture was taken. There's a big old pile of dirt. There's a lot of stuff happening. You can watch that actually on some of our um, update episodes. Uh, with This is the property on Bay Street in Santa Monica. So let's, count, let's do a little recap of the areas affected um, by the law. So basically in LA, there's a huge cluster of buildings uh, in the valley. Here's the valley. This is downtown LA. And then this is all the way down to... Uh, you know, West LA and Santa Monica. Santa Monica is also affected right now. And then there's a, a kind of a string of buildings along the Alameda corridor all the way down to San Pedro. There's a small cluster of buildings down in San Pedro. So why in the world did these cities, Santa Monica and LA, pass these laws? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about it. They're thinking that if a uh, a 7.8 earthquake happened, we we could, the statisticians, right, um, estimate that there'd be 1,800 deaths and uh, 700 buildings um, would, re, would collapse, 1,500 soft story buildings, and the economic loss they expect is, is over $100 billion in direct uh, damage. So... This is a little slide that I stole from the Simpson, took a picture of it. I went to the Simpson Strong um, Strong Frame Seminar 
gotten two of those actually. Um, and I took a picture of one of their, of their PowerPoint slides. So this was put out by a, a think tank here in Southern California to assess the economic damage caused by a, a significant earthquake, magnitude 7.8. By the way, guys, the, the you should know that it isn't just the, the strength of the earthquake, but it's the length. The um, I was I was reading uh, some of the technical specs on one of the manufacturers, uh, Simpson in particular, and they were talking about the deflection of the building almost doubles in in the angle of deflection when the earthquake goes from 60 seconds to 120 seconds to so the first 60 seconds there's a certain amount of deflection, and then the next 60 seconds after that so it. At, at 120 seconds, the amount of deflection of the building is double. So the, the damage is really caused by the length of the building. That combination of the length of the build, the length of the earthquake uh, causes a significant amount of damage, not only the magnitude. So this is, uh, this is what we're looking at here. Um, this little histogram here gives you an idea of what's going on. So there's projected 800 buildings in West Hollywood. They just passed the ordinance. They're just kind of getting started with that whole thing. Um, in the city of LA, there's 13,500. You know, that's kind of a rough number. Uh, Santa Monica is about 1,700. And in the Bay Area, up in San Francisco is 27,000. Actually, the number is even a little bit bigger than that because there are several neighboring cities that are adopting the the deal right now so this is uh combined 42,000 buildings a lot of buildings a lot of money easily a hundred billion dollars tuck under parking why is it weak so check this out i mean the whole the these whole an entire wall you know section is is completely weak it has all of the support that it needs uh vertically horizontally right for the weight but the um the lateral that wall the fact that a wall is missing from here it, it 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 basically that's what makes it weak what makes it soft by the way you should know that a two-story building like that weighs a little bit over a hundred pounds per square foot so if you have an opening that's uh let's say let's say this is probably 16 32 plus another 12 uh was that 44 something like that 44 square feet by 20 deep that's you know it could be over a hundred thousand pounds just in this section there that starts to move back and forth and gets that kinetic energy going and if you don't have the the protection there it's a problem so this is a building in santa monica that i went to go see i went to go talk to the owner very nice guy his name is albert lynn albert if you're watching hello so Albert's uh, elected to move forward with the, um, the the engineering. He had the he hired an engineer to do that. We'll be giving him a price for construction in a few months once uh, once there's some plans ready to go. But this is in Santa Monica. This is a building that we are um, going to start the design phase in Studio City. It's a four unit building. Not a, it's a big building by structure in the section that's that's soft. But unit count, it's not very big. So it's kind of a bummer because if you had a few more people, you'd divide the cost by a few more people. But it's a condo situation. Um, anyway, that's, uh, that's that building. We got, we got uh, they're going to be booked over to be measured next week. So, hey, let's talk about some deadlines with the city of L.A. So all of, everybody's gotten their notification, right? All of the, they broke it down to three priority levels. That's what we got here, here, and there. Okay, you got two years from the time, um, you got seven years to complete the construction, but you got two years to submit some plans to the city. So for those of you guys that were the first stage, you, you're, you're all done, right? You, your, your plans are in. In fact, I've got some updated info on, um, on where, where they stand in the plans that were submitted to the city of LA. So this is, these are your deadlines here, guys. Just keep track of that, you know, be mindful of that. Um, you'll be needing some plans here pretty soon. Some of you don't need a soft store retrofit and you can get by with a structural evaluation report by a certified licensed structural engineer. And there is a process to do that. If any of you guys need help with that, I can refer you to somebody. 
you need help with plans, you can talk to me. Uh, this is West Hollywood's timeline right now. They've adopted very similar guidelines to the city of LA, right? Like the city of LA is the top dog. The building and safety department of city of LA is actually world class. Pretty good stuff. Hey guys, so let's take a little quick break. We'll be right back and we'll continue with uh, the deadlines and the next uh, topic of conversation, software retrofit. multi-story special moment frame is a great application for some of these more challenging architectural situations where you've got to get your strength in and maintain your opening space. At the heart of the special moment frame is what we call our structural fuse. So we've actually designed specific elements that are going to absorb all the energy that the earthquake's going to throw into the building, and we've put that into elements that bolt on and bolt off. But you can literally, after an earthquake, change out the fuses if you want to and be back to 100% ready to go again. There's no super special tools that are required. Carpenters and people who handle the wood side of things can also put these frames together. A lot of the trust and familiarity that we have come to enjoy with Simpson is based on the laboratory testing, from shake table testing to in-house quality control. We have an expression here at Simpson that says one test is worth a thousand expert opinions. And we take that to heart. The Tide Guild Lab is Simpson's large-scale structural engineering research laboratory. We did a series of tests starting off with a kind of a mild earthquake. This is an earthquake that, you know, you're pretty sure that over the life of your building you're going to see an earthquake like that. From there we ratcheted up quite a bit with this earthquake we call the maximum considered event, and it's still fine. By doing this testing, the engineer can have a lot of confidence that these multi-story frames are going to perform exactly like we say they're going to perform. We can tailor the strength of each beamed column joint and design the frame to work for the, the demands that are in a particular project that we get from the engineer. The design support we get as engineers from Simpson Strong Tie is pretty amazing, both in the calculations, in the detailing, and during the permit approval process. The presence of this frame in the marketplace today shifts the paradigm and allows engineers a completely new tool in their toolbox on how to solve their structural problems and how they can very easily integrate multi-story special moment frames into light frame structures. Hey guys, we're back. Hey, we're talking about soft story retrofit. We're talking about some deadlines. I also want to share with you, uh, this is a little snippet of, uh, again, the, the Simpson slide for the deadlines. You can also down, you can request a download of these slides. This is a, a, an update by the city of LA. The people that have complied or have tried to comply have started um, compliance. So it looks like all the big, all the big buildings, the hundred unit, you know, big heavy heavy header buildings, thirty units and above, they've already started their plans and they're they're in compliance. Many of them are going to go into construction here pretty soon. It's you little small ten unit building people, man. You guys have been procrastinating and stuff, so you guys are going to have to go into compliance next year. There's about of the big guys. There's only about uh, one hundred eight that are that are past due by the way you can get extensions i talked to the guys down at the uh, at the city city of la's got a soft story unit on the eighth floor in their building off of figueroa in downtown la and there is an extension process i think you can get a few six month extensions by the way in the event that you're in a pinch by the way i also have a customer a client of mine who is, we're doing his soft story retrofit and he it works for Chase. He does the. He works in the commercial loan division, and he can get you some financing. So talk to me if you need a little bit of help with financing the soft story deal. Okay, so here's another little quick timeline snippet. Got two years to submit proof, three and a half years uh, to obtain a permit, and you got to finish your construction in seven years. Man, don't wait seven years. That's that'd be bad. So let's talk Simpson Strong Frame. We're going to talk, this episode is Simpson Strong Frame versus Hardy. All right. And by the way, you can read the blog article that's linked below at your leisure. So this is the Simpson Strong Frame 
very well marketed. Basically, it's amazing how you can turn a little piece of a, a big chunk of steel into a marketing piece, right? You put a nice big banner on top. You got uh, you know the Simpson numbers. Man, it's pretty impressive. Smart people. You got the nailers. The cool piece, the cool thing about this frame, the part that I like about this frame is that it's bolted on. See those bolts? It ships flat in its individual pieces, and then you assemble it at the job. So that's one of the cool, cool things about that frame. Uh, Simpson frames very heavily tested. Um, there's a couple of different testing labs. Um, this one's here actually in California, and uh, Simpson has a testing facility in their a manufacturing plant in Riverside, which we totally want to get access to. I'm talking to the guys. Hopefully, we can get access to that in the next month or so. So let's talk about some of your options, right? So this is this is really a Hardy frame versus uh, Simpson, but I do want to give you like kind of like all the options, and and we're going to put together a blog article that talks about all three. But this is a, a traditional moment frame, and it's welded. Basically, here's this cat welding this you know big old beam. In, you know the post you got a little posts there and you got a beam on top this is a traditional moment frame and uh, the welded deal it's just a different world it's a lot the, the actual steel cost is cheaper but the the labor and the timeline to get it installed is longer so there's some some reasons to not do that those steel frames many times also require lateral bracing and that keeps the that keeps the the actual i beam from rolling over so that brace you see that brace there it keeps it from rolling over so guys this is a problem because a lot of your buildings have a ton of plumbing in here those braces will cause those lines to be relocated and moved and stuff it's it can be problematic this is a real real cool guy works for Simpson and he's demonstrating their new beam and I'm gonna go into detail about that in a second um, they've got kind of like the next generation of beams uh, ready to roll there. So this is this is the slide. It's a side a side by side comparison. We're talking about the Simpson uh, moment frames, the Simpson products now. So you see how this is the first generation. This came out and it's got a fuse system. Um, it's called the structural fuse, but they called they called it the yield link. Now this link is made to twist, contort. And actually stretch during the earthquake it's gonna take the brunt of the earthquake um, force seismic force okay it will get ruined it will get damaged the cool part is that when that happens after a good size earthquake you don't have to remove the column and the beams you open up the stucco open up the area and then remove the link and I'll show you a picture of what that link looks like actually here to the left uh, he's holding a link independently. Now, the really exciting part is this other link that they came up with. Now, what happens is if you have a beam that has to go in, now remember, you can't cover, you can't make the parking space less than seven feet, seven inches, seven two, something like that. So a lot of the moment frames, if you need a moment frame and it doesn't fit, it's 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 difficult to make that happen. So what they did is they came up with an I-beam that's heavier per linear foot, but it's not as tall. So it's a, it's a, a thicker, basically a thicker, stronger beam. The problem is that these links didn't fit. You see, when you put, when a beam is smaller, these links, when a beam is smaller, the gap, this gap decreases. And in some cases, it didn't fit. It didn't. The, the beam was small was too small and then these flanges didn't fit so the boys at Simpson being the smart fellows that they are and ladies designed this other link which is a one-piece unit okay one piece unit and already comes attached to the column and then you basically in the field you put the uh, the beam in in place but this setup replaced the two um, in beams that are small uh, for applications. And I'm gonna show you what one of these looks like. This was at Deborah Kingston's house over in West LA, I went to go see her. Now, she has, she has the perfect scenario for the Simpson frame. And I'm totally bummed about it because the designer did not design 
a Simpson moment frame. This is a perfect. In fact, this is the reason that that that's that system was designed for for this application. And what they did is they used um, a, a traditional welded frame. So they're going to open this up. So you can't put the moment frame here, and you may be able to move it in front of the house, but it's going to cause like you, you got to you got to fireproof it. There's other things you got to do to it to to hide it right so it becomes problematic so it, i saw the plans for this job by the way and um it's gonna be the beam is actually gonna be in this soffit inside of it so it's gonna be a little tricky to um i don't know i guess deal with it on their part but this is a perfect application for the simpson frame now this is a job that we're designing and same thing this is kind of a nightmare scenario because the driveway slopes down so you still have to meet that seven foot and change clearance here and if we had to put a moment frame it would have to be within this footprint here but it turns out that the engineers calc this out and it's only going to be a, a cantilevered um, i-beam right there so they don't need a moment frame homeowner uh, property owner is totally stoked about that because it's going to be a lot cheaper to install that. But in the event that you did need a moment frame, this is a field um, scenario that would it would apply. It would solve the problem. So this is just kind of a schematic of the fuse. And you can see that it's it's got, um, it's thinner there, right? So that is made to stretch and contort and take the brunt of the, uh, of the abuse during the earthquake. And then basically you disassemble excuse me, disassemble all the bolts and replace that in place and you shore this up and then, you know, hypothetically you sledgehammer that bad boy back in place there and, and get it in there. This is a sample of, they had this over at the seminar we went to uh, a few, I don't know, like last week or something. Like that. And uh, so I'm bringing you the latest and greatest. So this is for a tremendously enormous beam. Um, look how thick that's that thing is right and that's the yielding that's the part that's made to bend right look how how thick and like just it's a big ball of steel it's awesome all right hardy frame let's talk about hardy frame made by my tech by the way both of these companies are california companies so yay california I'd like to see some nice good california jobs stay here so they're in ventura simpsons over in riverside and they're competitors you know they're basically uh, they're playing in the same space. So this is uh, one of their moment frames, and the the Hardy frame ships assembled. So all of the welding, all of the stuff is already done at the factory. They ship um, a this is this basically where it sits on. It's a um, anchor kit, an anchor template kit, and helps you know determine where where those things are going to be. So pretty cool system, pretty cool deal. Um, all of the certifications for the welds and all that stuff are done at the factory. So a lot of the things that, if you welded this in in the field, it, you, it's it's kind of a big process for inspections and stuff like that. So um, their system, they don't have a, a link system, but they have this uh, side plate uh, system that basically uh, fortifies the connection between the column and the beam and then there's some nailers which makes life easier for us contractors right so we can attach uh, plywood and then later stucco and stuff like that so it's a it's a cool deal pre-welded pre-assembled pre-engineered all of the engineering documents that you need to get it approved um, the, the engineers can download from uh, my tech and um, put together a full set of plans to get approved so that's the side plate system it's kind of a close-up deal you think it's you see it's pretty darn sturdy and uh, man I, I love to see the these factory welds it's amazing how they they um they get such a nice clean weld on on these connections so on this beam because of the side plate there is no break no lateral bracing that that top beam is not going to roll okay it's not going to roll this is an installation of uh of one of these uh, beams going into place. Some field welding may be necessary to tack on stuff after that, but the the big section of framing is it's it's done. 
or welding. It's it's done at the factory. You may tax th things onto it and stuff, but because it doesn't require any bracing, it's pretty much good to go. So this is kind of a, a schematic of of the system. You you see that there's a combination. You on all moment frames, um, there is a grade beam that has to go in place, and this one here seems to be not quite as thick. The requirement for the moment frame, uh, excuse me, the requirement for the grade beam under this scenario. And all of this stuff is spec'd out once um, you know the engineer determines which dimension or how how it's it, these moment frames they're measured in in pounds per foot, like how many how much it weighs per foot. So once all that stuff spec'd out, then they they'll come up with the grade beam specifications. This is how they're shipped. So and this is basically a job site that got dropped off, right? So you need a forklift to get these bad boys off the trick. The truck craned in. Operated one of those cranes about two years ago. It was fun. Okay, pro tips and recommendations. We'll be right back. Don't go away. We're gonna talk about pro tips and recommendations. <laughs> What's up guys thanks for coming back thanks for sticking along with us so I'm gonna give you guys some tips and I'm gonna give you a recommendation on what I think um, should should be used for your software retrofit in the event you need a moment frame so my first tip my first tip is not do not take the estimate that a contractor gives you as the true cost of construction until you have some plans. If you don't have some plans, you don't have a construction number yet. You may have a general idea, a ballpark, that kind of thing, but you don't have a number. Okay, so step one, if you're gonna make an economic decision, you have to have some plans. So invest the money on the plans, number one, get some hard plans, get, get somebody who's reputable, who's done a few of these, and uh, have, get your plans done. Then you can figure out what the construction cost is going to be okay so that's my first tip my second tip is make sure that everybody in the building knows that you are planning on retrofitting the building there's an entire process for uh, giving them notification and all that but be proactive you know it's going to take about two months to get your plans approved so go ahead and let your your tenants know that this is going to be part of the deal that you're going to you're going to get the building retrofit in they should expect construction to be happening. And then my third tip is stay away from field welded moment frames. If you have to do some field welding because you're doing some other another type of retrofit, then you have to do it. But if you're getting a moment frame, do not get a welded moment frame. Just stay away from it. It's going to add cost. It's going to add uncertainty to the construction project. Um, and it's going to create a tremendous amount of noise. Steel fabrication requires a grinder for many hours during the day to grind down welds, grind down prepping uh, metal for, for welding. Um, you gotta deal with the, the threat of fire because welding causes fires. You know, Welding on a, on a wood building is a problem. So you know, think about it, like when all those high rises are done and they're made out of uh, metal framing, there's no wood around. You know, they're, they're welding a metal building. But when you're welding metal in a wood building, not a good combination. Okay, so stay away from the welded 
welded frames. Okay, now I am going to give you a recommendation. I do have an opinion uh, between Hardy and Simpson. Simpson, well, let me start with Hardy first. Hardy panels are, and Hardy products are a very good product. The Hardy uh, moment frame is a pretty cool moment frame. However, I'm recommending the Simpson frame, and I'm going to tell you why. The Simpson frame gives an installer the, the option of bringing in the moment frame in pieces. Now, for some of you, that isn't an issue. Um, you, pl you have plenty of storage on site. You can access the area where the moment frame is going to go in easily, all of those things. But there's a lot of you that are on the west side that the buildings are really close together. The streets are narrow. There's zero parking. And getting the forklift and super heavy stuff in there and maneuvering a big old moment frame, especially if you've got a, a moment frame that's 20 feet long or 18 feet long or something like that, that's going to be a little dicier than being able to assemble it on site. So for that main reason, I, I, I recommend the Simpson. The other massive advantage with the Simpson frame is that the yield link Let's say you do have an earthquake. Let's say you spend all of this money to get this moment frame put in. Let's say you spend 80,000, 120 grand, you know, God forbid. And there's a, a significant seismic event. There's an earthquake. And the moment frame gets damaged. With the Simpson product, the likelihood, the design is that the link gets damaged and only that gets replaced. What most people don't know, if you have a welded frame or you have a frame that doesn't have a fail-safe mechanism, okay, the moment frame or the column get damaged. Well, there's no way to repair that. You got to cut it out, <coughs> remove the column, remove the beam, and then break the grade beam down and re-pour it so that you can get all of that stuff locked in. Some people may say, okay, you may be able to break some of the grade beam or whatever. Listen, these grade beams that we're putting in have rebar, rebar stirrups every three inches. That is going to be a freaking nightmare to break that concrete. And the PSI on that concrete is very high. That concrete grade beam is a beast. It is going to be very expensive to remove all of that and then re-put it in. So... I would say the cost is, I don't think the cost is even, some people would say, oh, you know, those grade beams are, I mean, the uh, the Simpson frames or the, the moment frames, the prefabricated ones are way more than the welded ones. I, I think that's the, in the scheme of two grand, three grand, I don't, I don't even know if it's that much, but let's say that they were, let's say that they were, the frame itself was three grand more than if somebody welded it. Hell, let's say it's five grand more. On, on a hundred thousand dollar job that's no money you know what I mean and at least you're giving yourself a little bit of, of a little bit of protection in knowing that the, that you'll be able to replace the the links and keep that whole the you know the stuff that's in there in place so those are two key factors for me um, that are the real reason that I'm recommending the Simpson frame it's a very impressive technology uh, there, Simpson has a ton of videos out there. You can look at them and become more educated with them. We have a, um, a few other videos that talk about the Simpson frames, but I think that overall, if this is if you have a if this is going to be a portfolio property for you, meaning that you're gonna um, this is part of your kids' inheritance and stuff. Uh, many of you, I signed on a um, a customer who inherited the building from his parents and it's been in the family and it's going to be in the family moving forward you want to make sure that you're that you're putting in something that's going to last and that um you're not going to have to come back and redo again so do we have any questions on the wire about the the soft store retrofits one question is uh, from a property owner i never got my notice letter what do i do now so the, the first thing you could do is um, you can call Building and Safety and talk to the folks over at the Soft Story unit, give them your address, and they'll, they'll tell you where you stand on the notification. If you know, pretty much everybody's gotten their notice. So the last band of folks would have gotten the notice um, at the end of last year. 
So right now, let's just take some action and uh, get your get your building plans started so that you can figure out what it's going to take for construction. You can, you can call us, by the way. We'll handle that for you. Do you have a list? A list of what? Of the soft story, soft story properties? The city, you can download the soft story properties. But basically, your property, if your property has a tuck under parking, if it is um, over three units, and if the there's a, a dwelling unit above the garage that was built before the, what is this, 70, 1970? 69? 79. If it was built before 79, you meet the criteria. You're going to do it. You can, you, you're you going to have to do it. You can call the city and verify. If you want to fight it, if you feel like it, your building isn't a soft story, like I said, you can do a structural, hire a uh, engineer to do um, an observation and submit that in protest to the city. Another question is, uh, a building with covered garage, is that also considered a soft story? Not unless you have a dwelling unit. It has to have a dwelling unit above it. Most tenants do not have to move out, especially if there's no welding involved. Your biggest, the biggest deal they're going to have to deal with is the uh, construction noise and maybe losing their parking space for a little bit. So how long do soft story retrofit projects take? Typically speaking, if it's under 10 units, it'll be about uh, two months. Including... No, just construction. Construction will be two months. You can probably get the plans drawn up in about four weeks. It'll take uh, two months to get the plans approved. A question from one of our viewers. They want to know, where do I get engineering plans? We can get you some engineering plans right here. Just uh, send a, go to baycitiesconstruction.com. Go to Soft Story Retrofit. Put in your info in there. And I'll contact you ASAP, and we'll talk about your project. You can also send me some pictures. If for those of you that are not quite ready yet, but are considering getting started, if you want me to give you just a a, a verbal consultation over the phone, if you email me your pictures to Alex at BayCitiesConstruction.com, um, make sure you put in your phone number and stuff. I'll give you a call back, and I'll give you some feedback. Looks like a property owner that already has plans approved is asking, how do I bid out my project? Well, you should, should probably uh, should put out a uh, kind of a, your little criteria of what what um, what would qualify somebody to bid on your project. But um, we would we would we would potentially be interested in putting together uh, an estimate or a quote for you. You should focus on the person. Focus on the company and the people that are going to work for you, not so much on the number. All the numbers, they're going to be around a certain price point, you know, plus or minus five, maybe 7000 bucks. But really focus on the person. You got That person that you hire, they better convince you that they're the person for the job, for your job, that they have to be, they have to be a good fit for you personality-wise, capability-wise, that type of stuff. Focus on that. How do I find an engineer? Well, um, we can provide the planning for you, but if you need a structural stuff, uh, we can refer you to a few, so go ahead and contact us. Uh, another property owner is asking, how much is the price per bay for a soft story retrofit? Mm, that's a, we don't price that out like that. I don't know. I think that that in in construction a lot of a lot of contractors they they want to put a, a kind of a simpleton spin on stuff you know you you, you have to price out the job um, there's more to it a lot of them there's more stuff that you have to do than just the bay you have to sometimes block forty linear feet of beam to uh, floor joist connection all the ones you got to relocate plumbing. The plumbing that you're relocating is already corroded, so you got to throw that away and start new. Uh, other areas, you got to add shear walls. So, putting a, a price per bay is doesn't help anybody determine what the cost is going to be. Got to get some plans. Got to price out those plans. With the plans, you have the quantities, and you also know what direction the construction is going to go. Are you going to go with uh, strong walls? 
Are you going to go with a moment frame? Are you going to go with just shear walls? There's all of these different options, and you don't know what it's going to be, and your contractor surely doesn't know what it's going to be unless you have some plans. So get some plans. A follow-up question. So is the price per bay a myth? Yeah, I don't know. It's just something somebody made up. Uh, I mean, I, I, I suppose that if you had 10 bays in, in a series of buildings at one location, you could somehow come up with a, a per bay cost. But, on you know, one building in one part of town and, an, and another building in another part of town to equate the the cost per bay is, is silly. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. There are some bays that are longer than others, right? So the longer the span and the more weight there is above, um, the the thicker that steel beam is going to be so the the weight per foot is could be different it could be a hundred per a uh, hundred pounds per foot it could be 150 pounds per foot you don't know so one moment i've seen moment frames that are seven thousand bucks i've seen moment frames that are fifteen thousand bucks so cost per bay that, that, that doesn't mean anything it's like it's like uh i don't know like buying a car but the price per tire or something like that i don't know it doesn't mean anything. It's just something somebody made up. A property owner is asking, do you give free estimates for a retrofit? I will give, um, under certain conditions, I'll give a cost assessment. And there's a process that we go by in order to do that when you don't have plans. If you have plans and we determine we're going to fit for each other, for sure, I'll put together a quote for you. Uh, another question that, that just came in is... Uh, do all engineers use Simpson systems? No, they don't. It's a personal preference. Um, they some engineers are more familiar with some products than others. You got to remember that Simpson provides Hardy Frame provides uh, proprietary drawings for each of their products, right? So some engineers are are just more comfortable using one over the other. You should have feedback from a contractor, though, because the contractor can help the engineer come up with a design that um, is cheaper to build, or, or not, not even a design. I mean, the methodology, right? So some people would say, hey, moment frames are more expensive than, than doing shear walls. Well, there was a three-story building that we put a price on about two months ago. It had no moment frame, and if it had a moment frame, it would have been cheaper because the weight of the building required all of this insane stucco breaking and shear walling that wouldn't have been necessary if you just had a moment frame so it depends it just depends on the unit everybody wants to put stuff into like the same box right of cost or or methodology for the repair and they're not each building has to be looked at as an individual independent building what is this gonna what is the retrofit uh, necessary what is the resistance uh, parameters that are needed and then how is cost effective how is cost affected by the different construction um, techniques that you use right do you go moment frame do you go strong wall do you go hold down shear wall combination what are you going to do so these are all things that that you need a team of people that are have dedicated a significant amount of time in learning about this to figure out for you. You know, this is not something that the homeowner should be determining. What else we got? Uh, we have an interesting question from, uh, I think it's a property owner. They're saying uh, their property has survived earthquakes in the past. Why do they need to retrofit? Um, that's a great question. And, and most likely your property is going to survive an earthquake in the future. The problem is that the the analysis that the uh, the little the, the the statisticians have come up with they're fearful that if we have a the big one a seven eight that lasts over a minute they're going to lose a lot of lives and they're fearful of I, I think I think a, a big push for this has come from the mass migration that these natural disasters have caused in other parts of the country right so whether it's um, in New Orleans or the Jersey Shore when you have mass devastation you have not only the economic loss of the event but you have mass migration and you know the Los Angeles is the second largest city in the country 
you know so it's important that it doesn't that that it, it is not crippled in the event of an earthquake and these are the softest weakest buildings by far uh, another question is uh do moment frames need any special inspection only the grade beam connection so all of the moment frames they come pre-certified from the factory in fact you could say that you would never get the kind of quality control in the field that you would get at the factory the factory welds are some of the best welds you'll ever see um, so the 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 main inspection that you're going to see is the way that the um, the the bolts are tied to the rebar in the grade beam that's going to be the main inspection but the actual frame itself no you're not going to see that one last question is how long should we expect to pay for a retrofit project how long how much oh how much the question is how much should you expect to pay for a retrofit project we have a blog article for that um and you should probably refer that as a guideline the average retrofit cost is about seventy four thousand the last three that we've uh, put numbers on, they've varied from 40. I think one came in at 38. Another one came in at like 60. Um, a couple of big ones with moment frames and back and front retrofits. So that's what skewed, I think, the number up. But probably the last three, they're, they're under 70,000. So they're, they're under 70,000, like a lot. Like, a, like, a, like I said, one is 40. There's another one I think that's that's coming on board that's going to be like in the mid three, 30s, like 35,000 or something like that. So it's it's building relate it's directly a uh, case by case basis. We can give you uh, a pretty good idea of what it's going to cost based on the methodology that we use. We'll gladly talk to you about that when you give our offices a call. We have any other questions, Brian? That's it. Well, folks, thanks very much for your questions. Really appreciate it. If you want to learn more, please go to baycitiesconstruction.com. Click on the blog article on the blog uh, section. section. There's hundreds of articles there. We also have tons of videos on YouTube and Facebook that are soft story related. And uh, we are always here to answer questions. Obviously, at the office, you can give us a call. Our phone number is right there. This is Steve and I. We've been in business uh, over 15 years. And uh, we have a team of folks, folks. We have a team of people that are here and ready to help you out. The soft story deal can be a little bit daunting, a little bit stressful. And we, we're here to take the, uh, the stress out of it. We'll handle it for you. We'll put together the architectural engineering drawings. We'll represent you with the city. We'll manage the project and we'll build you. We'll put your building back together. Don't miss the next episode, which is every Tuesday next week at 5.30. We come to you on Facebook Live. If you want to give us our, give us a call, you want to check us out, see what people are saying about us, please uh, click any of those little websites down there. they will give you plenty of information about uh, what other people think about us. So, hey, till next week, folks, thank you very much for visiting us, for being part of the show. For those of you that ask questions, that's awesome. It makes uh, the show a lot more fun and uh, probably answering some questions that other people have. So I'll see you next week, folks. Remember, you don't need a contractor. You need a team of pros. Hey, I'm glad you didn't go away. I know you remembered I was going to have a special offer. So here's our offer, Soft Story Retrofit. 6,500 if you have a 10 unit or less, 10 unit building or less, 6,500 will cover your architectural engineering fees. Of course, the uh, plan check fees will be extra. That'll be whatever the city charges, probably about 800 bucks, could be less. And uh, we'll do the architectural engineering 6,500 and we will apply $3,000 towards your construction when you hire us to do the construction. All right, so take advantage of that. Go ahead and click below. Go to baycitiesconstruction.com. Type in your info in there, and I'll call you right away and book your free consultation. See you next week.
name's Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contract, you need a team of pros.